Hi, my name is Max and this is the LaTeX Beginners course. In this video we are gonna start writing with LaTeX. The first step is to open TextMaker, I just did that. And then we can take a look at our interface. So on the left side we have a field called structure. Here obviously the structure of a document will be displayed, we're gonna see that later. Then on the right side is our input field. Here we put in our text and our commands. So this will be the most important part of TextMaker for us. And below we're gonna receive our error messages. Yeah, so hopefully not too many of them. Then uh, above are some buttons for options and so on. They are pretty intuitive, most of them. And here is a most important button. This is the quick build button. We're gonna produce a PDF document with this. And then I want to go to options and configure text maker and then check this little box because we want to embed our PDF viewer and when we click here now we see the PDF we created with text maker on the right side so yeah this is just a little help for text maker to be a bit more comfortable for us now we want to start writing in the input field but as you can see this isn't working this is because we don't have a document open, so our first step is to open a new document. Then let's give us just some space. Yeah, we have to realize that tech is a sort of programming language, uh, which means that everything we wanted to do, we have to tell it. Um, this sounds very difficult, but actually it's really easy. We just need to use some commands. Um, uh, these commands you can uh, look them up or you can remember them and of course this is the reason why we do this video course so you can learn these commands easily. Um, yeah and our first command for this um, document will be a document class. So um, every command is introduced with a backslash and behind the backslash we write the command. Um, here we say document class and that's an, ad that's an advantage of the text maker. It can predict what we want to say, so we don't have to write the whole command in most cases. And then we have uh, brackets and we have curly braces. In the curly braces, uh, we can insert the actual document class we want. In our, co in our case, let's just stick with SCR article. Yeah, just to write it like that, this will work. And then in the brackets we can include some options, um, we will come back uh, to that later, but for now let's just say A4 paper. Fine. The next commands we need are the begin and end document commands. So again backslash and then begin. And in the braces we just say document. And yeah, this tells LaTeX to begin the document. And TextMaker already knows we need an end document. So in between these two commands, a document will be created. Yeah. So everything we write in between these commands will be a document. Anything that will be before document or after end document um, will not be in the document. So yeah, this is uh, the, the most important part of our document. Then Let's just include some blind text and now we are ready to compile. And as you can see we are not ready to compile, we first have to save the file. Um, so let's go to file and save it. I would recommend you to save the file in an empty folder and now let's just call it fancy document. Yeah, we saved it, here the document path is displayed, and now we can quick build. And as we can see, now our first document is created as a PDF. Before we move on, I have to mention another aspect of LaTeX, which are packages. The package basically introduces a new aspect to the LaTeX program, which isn't included in the basic program. And we will need these packages throughout this video course. Um, but now let's just start with three basic packages that we will need in any kind of document. So um, packages are always included in the preamble, which is the part between doc document class and begin document. 
and the command for including a package is backslash use package. Then we have the brackets and the, and the braces again. Um, in the braces we select the, the package we, we, we want to include. So the first package is input tank. And in the brackets uh, we have to introduce the, the option. So in our case utf8. Then we need two additional packages. I'm just copying them in. The bubble package with English language settings. Of course, if you want to write in another language, then go ahead and select another language. And the font tank package with T1 settings. Yeah, now we can compile this. And yeah, this is working. Now we can move on. We can start with some basic text formatting. Let's say we want to have a line break between these two sentences. When we look at our LaTeX file, we see that the whole paragraph is written in one line and what we get is one paragraph. So the logical conclusion would be to separate this, uh, in this into two paragraphs to just break the line here and then compile. But uh, this isn't working, we still have one paragraph. So as you can see, LaTeX treats it the same if you skip a line or you don't skip a line. Um, it makes no difference for LaTeX. But how do you separate uh, paragraphs? You have to separate them with an empty line in between. So just skip another line and then line 16 is empty. And when we compile now, it should work. Yeah, wonderful. So we now have separated these two paragraphs with an empty line. That's the way to write in LaTeX. So every time you want to separate a paragraph, just skip a line to have an empty line in between. Now you might want to give this paragraph the title and in Word you would just write the title down and then make it bold or something. But this isn't how it works in LaTeX. In LaTeX we have a command for this. Um, the command is backslash section and then in the, in the braces uh, we can insert the name of our section. So let's call it Basics. Yeah, and when we compile now, we see that LaTeX has automatically created a proper title for this uh, paragraph. And we can, um, it's also, uh, you can see it's also enumerated, so it has the number one. If you, uh, if we include another section, um, let's call it blind stuff and then include some other text. Um, yeah, now we have uh, two, two sections and it's automatically enumerated. There are also different levels in our sections. So um, the, the next level for a section would be a subsection. Um, yeah, the command subsection and then I just give it a random name, include some text, and yeah, we have our subsection and uh, of course we need another subsection, because otherwise it wouldn't make sense. Um, yeah, now we have section one with with 1.1 1, 1 .1 and 1.2 and there's also a third level of um of a sections which is the sub sub section and yeah let's call it one one and then two one Include some text. Yeah, and we have our sub subsections. Fine. Now, the amazing thing about LaTeX, you can see it on the left side. Here, as we created our sections and subsections, the, the structure of this document has uh, created itself automatically. And now we can jump between our sections um, and subsections and so on. 
So uh, yeah, it's just easier to navigate uh, in our document. And another thing, now we can uh, use another command. Uh, the command is make, no, the command is table of contents. Yep, LaTeX already knows it. Uh, text maker already knows it the, with the command table of contents the table of contents is automatically created so we have to compile two times and then you see a table of contents here are the basics here are the blind stuff and then subsection um sub subsection yeah everything's there the next step in the direction of a proper document in LaTeX um would be the title for the whole document so we have uh, another command which is just backslash title and then we we name our document we already said fancy document so uh, let's stick with that and then we can uh, add a date as well so date and the date is just today so today is another command uh, the tells LaTeX to include the, um, yeah, the, the actual date. And then author, author, uh, yeah, let's just say me, Max. Now, when we compile, we see that uh, nothing has changed because uh, this is just information that LaTeX now knows, but uh, LaTeX doesn't know uh, that we want it displayed. So in order to display it, we have to include another command which is make title and now a title with all the viable information so the title of the document the date and the author will be created by LaTeX. yeah this is our title and what you can do is add more things so co-author and publisher and anything but yeah, uh, at the moment this isn't important for us. I have to admit, this doesn't look very good at the moment because here we have a table of contents and then immediately our document begins. It would be nicer if we had a t whole, pi whole title page just for the title and the table of contents and begin the document on the next page. Um, this is actually easy. We have a command for this, which is called new page. And it tells LaTeX obviously to skip the rest of the page and put the rest on the new page so yeah this is working now our first section is on page two you might notice that in the table of contents uh, it still says page one which isn't true anymore but um the table of contents always needs two times compilation so when we compile again we see yeah now basics is on page two so now the table of contents is up to date. Let's just go back to um, basic text formatting. Uh, we already know how to skip a line in LaTeX. Just uh, put an empty line in, in between and now we, uh, we have two paragraphs. But uh, let's say we want to have an empty line in the PDF document as well. How do, you, how do we do that? Um, if we put any number of empty lines uh, in, the, in the LaTeX document, uh, it won't matter we need a different command and the command that can help us is the new line command so backslash new line and then we have the empty line in a pdf document um, an abbreviation for new line is the double backslash working just the same and we will encounter this double backslash many times uh, later in this video course the last thing I want to show you in this video is the percent sign. The percent sign is a very important sign in LaTeX because it tells the program that everything that comes behind it in the line um, should not be in the document and should not be taken into consideration. Uh, for example, if I put the percent sign in front of line 28, the whole text of line 28 won't be in the document. So let's try it out. And we can see the text has disappeared because the percent sign is there. Yeah, and uh, we can remove that and the text will be there um, again. Uh, the percent sign is also good if we have commands and we don't want to uh, 
want the, the commands to be uh, uh, active. So we can put this command in front of a double backslash. And it tells LaTeX that this double backslash um, shouldn't be taken into consideration. And now we have the same thing that we had before. We don't have this empty line in between. And without the percent sign, it works. So this is uh, perfect if you want to make annotations for yourself that shouldn't appear in the final document. And it's also uh, a nice thing if you want to test different commands, uh, how they work, uh, how the document looks without them and with them. Now, if you actually want to include a percent sign uh, without uh, its function, uh, you can just put a backslash in front of the percent sign and now it will appear as a percent sign and it will not delete the text that comes after it. So yeah, here we are. Finally, let's look at our folder. Yeah, as I said before, you should save it uh, in an empty folder because not only uh, will the text file be there, uh, also the PDF file and some auxiliary files will be there. So yeah, it, otherwise uh, if you wouldn't save it in an empty folder, it will obviously create a mess. Um, then we can click on a PDF file and yeah, let's take a short look at it. We've got our title, fancy document with the author and the date. We also got our table of contents with the sections, subsections and sub subsections automatically created and also the correct pages. Um, basically in this video we learned how to properly structure a document with LaTeX, which is quite nice, but it won't be enough in order to really work with LaTeX. So we're going to do several other videos. Um, the next video will be about environments, which really will enhance your experience with LaTeX. I think so. I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.